Masks are not required in the church at this time. However, our Eucharistic ministers will be masked as the Eucharist is distributed. Please join me in singing number 435, Be Not Afraid. Number 435, please stand. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, no. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered this weekend to celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings this weekend deal with the topic of faith. So as we gather as a community of faith, let's call to my moments uh, when we have failed to stir up and hold precious those moments when God has clearly revealed himself to us to strengthen our faith and now ask for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers. That, with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they had put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. has chosen, chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. 
Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for, an evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had, have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Everyone who follows me will have the light of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants and eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most of us have probably been bowling at some part in our life. If not, we're probably familiar with it and know what it is to, to shoot a ball down the lane and have it pick off maybe two of the ten pins. Right? And what generally happens at the moment is the two pins that get scraped go dodging off. And the other eight remain unshaken, as if nothing had happened at all. And I want to present that image to you as, as we unpack the readings today that talk about faith. And the idea that when we talk about faith, there can be a tendency and an urge to compare ourselves with everyone else in the room, right? 
Um, we look at other people and we say, gosh, I wish I had their faith, right? They're so strong, they're so certain, they're so devout. And then we question ourselves. We, we wonder if, if I really had deep faith, I, I wouldn't struggle. If I really had faith, I wouldn't be discouraged. If I really had faith, I would be doing better in this moment. And I want you to recall that imagery of a bowling ball that picks off two pins, but not eight. And for two, their entire world gets changed immediately. But for the other eight, it's like nothing happened at all. T today, the 6th of August, is the Feast of the Transfiguration. That's not what we're celebrating right now. We've moved into the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. But the Transfiguration is actually a really good setup for the readings this weekend on faith. As a reminder, the Transfiguration is a celebration when Jesus takes some of his disciples up a mountain and reveals to them his glory, his divinity, with the thought that when the crucifixion comes, this would steady them. This would hold their faith in place when they're looking at him bleeding in agony and dying from this world, scorned by everyone in public viewing, that their faith would hold in that moment by offering this, this little gift, this gift of his divinity, Jesus glorified. That's the point of the transfiguration. But here's the thing. Jesus didn't transfigure himself in front of all his disciples or not even all 12 of his friends. He took three, a quarter, that's all. It's like two bowling pins out of 10 got hit with this but everyone else was left out. I wanna think about that for a minute. The idea that if you were exposed to the transfiguration of Jesus, how surely your faith would be different than the other nine apostles, right? that you had seen something that they had not seen. You had heard the voice of the Father that they did not hear, and how that would have done something for you that, of course, it could not have done for them because they just didn't experience it. They didn't get hit with it. When Jesus today starts unpacking who a good steward is, faithful, full of faith. He acknowledges by the end of the gospel that how God will deal with us is dependent on how much we know. There are those who clearly have had the experiences in life where they know what God is asking them to do. And for those who don't do it, the consequences will be heavier. But Jesus acknowledges that there are those who are ignorant of their Father's will. They are perhaps less faithful, full of faith. And they will be dealt with differently because they don't know as much. I pitch that out to us as a way of reassuring us that our individual personalized faith is not something to compare with the person next to us. Because like the transfiguration, we've all had different experiences. We've all had different ways in which the Lord has revealed himself to us or spoken into us. Our responsibility is to take whatever it is that God has done to stir up faith within us and hold tight to it. That's our responsibility. And you and I can do that by simply calling to mind on a regular basis, when are the moments when I knew with deep conviction that God was real or that he loved me or that he had a purpose for my life 
or that he was looking out for me or that he heard my cry or that he was merciful to me, a sinner. When you and I take those personal moments of faith and cling to them and call them to mind, it informs then how we live, how we manifest the master's will in our life. If you and I play the keeping up with the Joneses game, we lose track of the gift of our own faith. Oh, I wish I were more like her. I wish I were more like him. No. And if you and I refuse to, to nurse and appreciate the moments of faith that the Lord has granted to us, maybe not the transfiguration, but maybe some other events in our life where we got picked off like a bowling pin and that was just meant for us it wasn't meant for anyone else in the room so brothers and sisters it's clear from the scripture readings today that faith is is essential to salvation an act of faith and you and i are asked to believe that god is not stingy in revealing himself to us or for that matter his will how he does that is different for each of us, so no comparisons. What we are on for is clinging to those moments, rejoicing in them, and using them to dictate how we are living out our lives as good, prudent stewards full of faith. At the end of the day, the Lord wants us to persevere and you and I have to trust that he has given us enough moments of faith that will get us across the finish line. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that the Father always hears our prayers, we offer our needs and intentions. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons who serve and lead the household of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders who one day must give an accounting of their work to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect and care for God's creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For faith that looks forward to an eternal city, founded, designed, and built by God, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in faith, 
especially Barbara Blickman, Trevor Weinrich, Maria Preis, and all the deceased members of our St. Thomas More Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the individual intentions we bring with us to Mass and for Loreen Van Leeuwen, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us graces that we might easily and frequently call to mind moments when you have revealed your face and your voice to us, that kindling these moments, it might help us manifest your will more faithfully. Prevent us from comparing our faith life with others, and instead, deepen our conviction that you give us what we need for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are being prepared, please join with us in singing number 389, The Servant Song, number 389. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the pledge at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of the most holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Oh, 
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offer them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, Taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may be truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, 
your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole order of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please join us in singing our first communion song, which is You Are Near, number 435. You Are Near, number 435. Standing always at my side, you guard me from the Our second communion song can be found on page 664, Loving and Forgiving, number 664. Bless 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements, a word of welcome to any visitors or parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. This weekend is the first Sunday food drive benefiting Seton Center and our local Redbridge food pantry. Items may be brought to the Narthex through Monday morning. The parish picnic is three weeks away. We are looking for volunteers to assist us in 30-minute shifts for this fun evening of fellowship. In two weeks, Fresh Fire, a Friday evening of candlelit Eucharistic adoration, testimony, praise and worship, and personal, personal advocacy through prayer teams, returns for the first of five fall offerings here at St. Thomas More. Eucharistic adoration is held in the church on Sundays following the 11 o'clock mass until 9 p.m. Next weekend is Deacon Finlong's last weekend with us before he heads off to the seminary in Cincinnati Parishioners are invited to sign a card out in the Narthex sometime this week uh, to wish uh, Deacon Benjamin uh, well. He'll be with us for the rest of the week uh, through next weekend, uh, but we want to give him a send-off because he has to hit the road immediately to, <clears throat> excuse me, to get to Cincinnati in time. So for details on any of those events, you can check out our bulletin, our website, our weekly email blast, or you can scan the QR code in the pews. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing song, number 443. How can I keep from singing? Number 443. Life goes on in endless song of Robert's lamentation. I hear the real though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my hero's call, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife,
strife, I hear that music ringing. It sounds and echoes in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost soul. While to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me roar, I hear the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, Songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, While to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble, sick with fear, and hear their death bells ringing. When friends rejoice both far and dear, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep? from singing. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, or to that rock I'm clinging. Since, Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep?